We're at the Scope in Norfolk. It's men's semifinal action for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Today's winners advance to tomorrow's championship game where they can take home that trophy and go to the big dance for the NCAA. Let's check out the brackets as North Carolina A&T will be taking on Hampton University, number four seed against number one, and how these teams got here. Of course, Hampton and North Carolina A&T are playing. Hampton a winner over Florida A&M. North Carolina A&T knocked off Norfolk State. Well, on the other side, later tonight, we'll see North Carolina Central against Morgan State. North Carolina Central knocked off Savannah State, while Bethune-Cookman was upended by Morgan State. Hello, everyone. Charlie Neal, along with my partner, Sy Alexander, we welcome you to Norfolk. And Norfolk uh, State uh, lost this game, a big game, to North Carolina A&T last night. A&T had a big win to advance to today's semifinals thanks to a young man by the name of Femi Alujabi. Yeah, the big fella last night had a great game. He had 18 points and 9 rebounds on 5 of 11 shooting, and he went 8 for 10 from the st charity strike. On the other side, Hampton, the top seed, will look to Jermaine Marrow, he had a double-double against Florida a and 15 points. He also had 10 rebounds. He's the, he's the leader of the basketball team. What I liked about him last night was he was nine assists with only two turnovers and got an end rebound among the Giants. So he was just uh, a, a, an assist away from a triple-double. Right. <laughs> that was pretty good. Regular season a and won in Greensboro, 92-84, but Hampton on a nine-game win streak since that loss to the Aggies. Last time they lost was in Greensboro. I think it was a high-scoring contest, 92 to 84. So this one about to get underway. Our officials, Garrick Shannon, along with Jackie Sanders and Haywood Bostic. And it's Hampton University controlling the opening tap. Aggies open up in a man to man. Mitchell with the shot, no good. And a rebound pulled down by Trevon Barnes. Ball out of bounds. It'll be Hampton maintaining possession. And that's what Hampton did last night against Florida AM. They dominated the glass, had 45 rebounds. Jermaine Marrow down the lane, pulls up for the J. Good. Leaving, stepping up where he left off last night, <laughs> no right? No doubt. Nice pull up off the bounce. Here you're starting five for North Carolina A&T. McGowan's Lardy. Actually, Lardy probably is not starting tonight. Uh, probably in his place would be Ed Mead, right? Well, no, they got Lardy. Uh, they did have him He's out there, right. He didn't start last night. Right, no, he did not. Key started last night. Missed shot. Mitchell coming out with it. Hampton starting lineup. Malik Trent Smith, Jeff Jermaine Marrow, Trevon Barnes, Kalen Fisher, and Akeem Mitchell. The pull-up jumper by Marrow, good. He has all of the points for the Pirates so far in this game, and it's a 5-0 start for Marrow, Hampton. Marrow 5, anti-0. <laughs> That's basically what it is. It is. Both teams started off from man-to-man. Luzibi, turnaround jumper, no good. Battle for the loose ball, it'll stay on the Aggies' end. Going off of the hands of Malik Trent Smith Street, rather. Nice form and good shot preparation by Jermaine Marrow on that three ball. Marrow, 1,000. Well, you put the five points that he has in this game, 1,096 career points. He's only a sophomore. To, yeah. Not bad, huh? <laughs> I think he'll probably hit 3,000 keep going. going out. 4,000, maybe. And it'll be the Aggies getting possession. Substitution, Ed Mee coming into the lineup for the Aggies. And he got him in pretty quickly because he had a great game last night. Larty goes to the sideline as you look at Jay Joyner. Second year as the head coach for the Aggies. Came in uh, as your assistant and took over after you stepped down. He's a fine young man, has done a tremendous job as the head coach of the Ag. Really turned this program around in two years. Boykin with the ball in his hands now. 
Down the lane, back to Boykin. He'll try the three off the back of the iron. Rebound by Mitchell. Mitchell all the way, puts it off the glass and partially blocked, but a foul is being called. And that's what Akeem Mitchell can do at 6'5". He can bring it in transition. He attacked the rim that last time and uh, actually went, went to the line. Mitchell uh, out of Charlotte, North Carolina. There it is. The foul against McGowan's. And you don't want to get the Devaris or the big fella Olujah be in foul trouble. They need this point productivity on the court. <laughs> Mitchell in their meeting in Greensboro, 21 points and four rebounds. And in the tournament, they went over Florida and M. He had 12 points, six rebounds, and one assist. As you look at Ed Buck Joyner, second gentleman to your right in his ninth year as the head coach of the Pirates. Second shot for Mitchell. It is good. And it's a six to nothing lead. A little pressure. One, two, two by the Pirates. Boykins, they get it into the front court. Sticking with straight man right now. Langley, along with Boykins and Edmead on the offense as far as the back court. For Coach Joyner, and we get a whistle. Great decision that time by Devontae Boykins had missed the three, and he thought better of it to take the second one. Shot fake up and under, went to the rim, created a foul situation. Here we go, right here. And Trevon Barnes will pick up the foul, and that'll send Boykins to the line to try to put the first points on the board for. The Aggies tonight, left-hander is good. And he's shooting right at 73% from the free throw line. When these two teams played earlier in the year, Boykins came away with an 11 points, four rebounds, also three steals in that contest. Big time game against the Hampton Pirates back in January. And he makes them both. Six to two ball game. Two to one pressure by the Aggies. Turn around, and it rolls in for Kalen Fisher. The friendly Junior. rim that time. Junior from Chicago. Chicago. Yes, indeed. Six-point lead now for Hampton University. Ed Mead. He had a fantastic game. He was the key to the win last night for the Aggies. 11 points, two rebounds, four assists. He has 13 points and three rebounds in the co in the tournament so far between the two games. Right. He's done an excellent job. Shot clock at six. Ed Mead dishes off. And nice easy layup for Elujabi. Created by Ed Mead. Nice assist that time. Good dribble penetration. Three ball doesn't fall. Mitchell is there, and it won't fall for him. This is the one thing that the Hampton Pirates do as well as any team in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, and that's go to the glass. They attack the, the rebound strong. Came in averaging 40.4 rebounds per contest and ranked second in the conference in rebounding. You win a lot of games when you can get 40 rebounds per night, Charlie. And Akeem Mitchell, he's shooting 81%. right at 81%. Yeah. From the free throw line. Junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, went to Carlisle School there. Second shot, forthcoming, and it's good. Good, good form on the shot. Ten to four, our score. Hampton has led throughout. Biggest lead was six nothing, and they have a six-point lead right now. Just a little token pressure by the Pirates. Ed Mead going around Elizabeth. Elizabeth takes it up. Ed Mead will take the three off the back of the iron. And it's Mitchell with the rebound. Out to Fisher. Kalen Fisher down the Mitchell. Back to Fisher. He'll take the three. Good. Good ball movement that time. Mitchell to Fisher. Fisher back to Fisher again. 
Nine point advantage for the Pirates. 20 and 13 coming into this game for the Aggies. Pirates come in 18 and 14 overall. But they were the number one seed coming into the tournament. Shot clock at six seconds now. Ed Me trapped. Double team. Shot clock. No good. No basket. Great defensive sequence that time by the Hampton Pirates. They're off to a great start, both offensively and defensively. And a timeout on the floor. Nine point advantage. The winner. This is a semifinal game. MEAC basketball tournament. March Madness in full swing here at the Scope in Norfolk. And the Pirates trying to get to the championship. They have a nine point advantage over the Aggies. One team, one shot, one dance. The 2018 MEAC Basketball Tournament is back at Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. It's six days of nonstop action as your favorite MEAC men's and women's basketball teams battle it out on the court for the right to play in the big dance. Get your tickets today at MEACHoops.com. Member institutions and Ticketmaster. March 5th through 10th at Scope Arena as the road to the big dance goes through Norfolk. Everyone starts at the same place. It's what you do next that counts. North Carolina A&T is proud to be a leader in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We are racing to preeminence in research, business, agriculture, and the arts. Your success matters here. You will push forward. You will achieve. You will finish. Because that's what Aggies do. 150 years of excellence and 40 years of accelerated growth under the insightful leadership of Dr. William R. Harvey. Hampton is recognized around the world as the standard of excellence. Hampton currently has four satellites in orbit, the world's largest freestanding proton therapy cancer treatment center. 92 new programs have been added. 30 new structures. Dr. Harvey has transformed Hampton University from a small black college to a world-class leader in the field of higher education. The Pirate of Hampton University has something to dance about early on as team leading by nine. This is a team, the Pirates, that finished the conference record 12 and four, and those four losses that they suffered in conference play were by total of 23 points. I tell you what, offensively right now, they really got it going, shooting 57% from the field, 67% from the three line. That's pretty tarred, isn't it? Yeah, no doubt. They're only shooting 78% from the free throw line. Right. <laughs> Inside, the nice jumper doesn't roll in for Charles Wilson Fisher. And he's done an excellent job off the bench for the Pirates. Ed Mead gets inside, and it falls. Nice dribble drive that last time. Great hit ahead pass that time by Morrow to Charles Wilson Fisher. Ran the floor exceptionally well. Good hands, finished at the rim. And the lead is still nine for the Pirates of Hampton. Ed Mead dishes off. B finishes. Two-man game between Ed Mead and B is what's clicking right now for the Aggies. Down low. That looked like a travel, but nothing called as Charles Wilson Fisher went in strong. Charles Wilson Fisher has really done the job off the bench. Right now, he's got uh, how many points? Two, four points, actually. Ed Mead gets it back outside. Here's Langley. Down, Langley will take the three. Good. And that three-point shot has really improved for Cameron Langley during the course of the year. Wouldn't take that shot early on. He has 18 points at rebounds, and we get a basket. Count it. Jermaine Marrow picks up the basket and a chance to complete a three-point play. Perfect offensive game so far for Marrow. Two for two from the field, one for one from the three line, and got a chance to make a three-point play the old-fashioned way. 
twenty four point six rebounds nine assists when these two teams met back in January so far in the one tournament game he has fifteen points ten rebounds nine assists just came close to a triple double one assist away from that so he's been uh, a steady hand for this Hampton University team as you saw Mitchell going to the sideline he's been the leader ever since he's been in this program Buck joining recruited him gave him the ball and said it's your show for the next four years and Merrill just a sophomore out of Newport News Virginia meantime at the other end the jumper by the Boykins won't fall rebound cleared by Trent Street Wilson Fisher reverse layup good he is really running the floor and they're hitting him with that head ahead transition pass that's the way you reward the big man when he runs the floor no doubt the ball and he did it his way poor transition defense by the Aggies the pass off to Walujabi and he can't get it to correction that is not a Lujabi that's keys Denzel keys who's come into the lineup now for the Aggies of North Carolina A&T the Aggies got to do a much better job with their transition defense right now because they're, they're slow Wilson Fisher has gotten two layups just simply because he's putting his head down and running like a deer and playing wide receiver catching that pass and laying it up speaking of wide receivers you're looking at one from the football team right. at the free throw line right now Denzel Keys who's a 64 percent free throw shooter in the tournament 14 points and 23 rebounds he had 12 rebounds in the first game against Delaware State and he had 11 against Norfolk State so he's done a good job on the board he's the energizer bunny for the Aggies Mr. Energy Denzel Keys misses the second one ball battle and Keys comes down with it almost and loses it that athleticism but he just couldn't control it 10 point advantage for the Pirates the number one seed number four seed as you look at the field goal attempts by a and T one of five from three point range Hampton two of three preseason poll Hampton was picked to finish fourth they finished number one while the Aggies and the reason why Jay Joyner got the coach of the year honor they were picked 13th in the preseason poll and look where they are in the semifinals right now as you get that basket by Hextall off the bench find a soft spot in the zone that time right in the center the MIAC logo sign and uh, knock the little 12 foot jump shot down 12 point lead now for Hampton Langley back out to Ed Mead he'll take the three good he's still on fire from last night he checked for Ed Mead Ed Mead with five points in the ball game right now. Down the lane, Kaelin Fisher pulls up. He's fouled. Kaelin Fisher fouled by Raymond Pratt. Sophomore out of Greensboro, North Carolina's Ben Smith High. Has not played in the tournament in game one. Got two rebounds in eight minutes in the quarterfinal action against Norfolk State. And right now, a 24 15 lead. Hampton by nine over the Aggies. Diverse. The dictionary defines it as showing a great deal of variety. Here in Hampton Roads, we are diverse. So whether you drive your own car, ride a bike, or use one of Hampton Roads Transit's many modes of transportation, it fits within our lifestyle. And while you may never ride Hampton Roads Transit, chances are you depend on someone who does. Help us connect Hampton Roads.
not just the ships, the armor, or the aircraft. It's something more. It's the will to fight and determination to win found inside each and every Marine that answers a nation's call. Battles won. 24-15, our score here at the Scope in Norfolk. Miak men's semifinal action going on right now. Winner goes to the championship game and field goal percentage so far for Hampton. They're shooting target 69%. And A&T not doing bad at 38 percent. Uh, the Pirates are sizzling. That's why consequently you have a nine point lead and you got Fisher at the line who's shooting 87 percent from the free throw line. And I jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> Kalen Fisher in their quarterfinal game against Florida and m played all but one minute played more than anybody else put in 39 minutes in that contest came away with Six points, six rebounds, two assists, and a steal. Tell you what, he was Mr. Hustle for the Pirates yesterday. Well, actually on uh, Wednesday. Pressure in the backcourt, and now it's a steal by the Pirates of Hampton University. You got to pick that ball up when you don't have full control of it. Jermaine Marrow working and pulls up for the jumper. Good. Marrow is sizzling the night. 12 point lead equaling their biggest of the night. The Pirates so far. They'll play the winner of our next game here tonight against will be North Carolina Central and Morgan State. That'll be for the championship tomorrow. Inside. And a foul is going to be whistled against Hextall as Denzel Keys trying to chase that one down. And in talking with the coaches from the ANT staff, this is what they wanted to exploit the high low offense. Either Keys to Illusion B or McGowan's to Illusion B or Keys to McGowan. And they got it in that time and created a foul. That's what they want to work on. They want to play the game from inside out. In the pass. Here's Keys. He'll drive the three. It's good. Denzel Keys with the three ball. Not known for the three point shooting, although he has shot 26% throughout the season. That's a big shot for the Aggies. They needed it. No doubt. 27 to 18. And Denzel Keys, member of that championship football team this year. Here's Hextall's three. No good. And Keys with the rebound. He's doing it on both ends, offensively and defensively. Langley back to Keys. He'll try it again. It's good. He's shooting them back in the game. 27-21 for Denzel Keys, a senior red shirt out of Kenston, North Carolina. Plays with a high level of intensity and energy. Well, Jay Joyner apparently has given him the green light. No doubt. Nice drive. And dribble drive by Trent Street to take it all the way for two. He plays as a two-way player, Trent Street is. Great anticipation on defense and get to the rack off the bounce. Eight-point ball game. Had been a six-to-nothing run by Aggies, and they're still heating up. Yeah, they, they're getting hot right now, yeah, McGowan's and uh, Keys. Now it's a five point game. They were down by as many as 12. And since that time, it's been a nine to two run. So the last one was a, a two point. It wasn't a three, apparently. So it's a six point lead. Finger roll doesn't fall, goes off the hands of Wilson Fisher. Great effort on the glass for McGowan's and Keys. These two guys have been the unsung heroes for the eight. Everybody talks about Olujabi, but uh, give a lot of credit to Keys and McGowan's. They've been steady all year for the Aggies. Six point game, 29 23. 
Hampton led by as many as 12 in this contest. But a couple of three pointers by Denzel Keys and another one by McGowan's. And we're going to go the other way. And that's two on McGowan's. That's an ill advised foul on McGowan's. He, he was hooking him and he really didn't have to. And that's two fouls now. You look at Buck Joyner on the sideline. Calm 14 and, cool. and 15. He's 14 and 15. Uh, four, I should say 14 and 5 in tournaments here at the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. He won it in 2011, 2014. They won it all in 2015, those three years. He knows how to coach tournament basketball. Nice pass. And the rim racker, Wilson Fisher. Don't be so mean, young fella. Throw it down. Lead is eight. Nice pass that time from Kalen Fisher to Wilson Fisher. Fisher brothers have to stick <laughs> together, right? But at the other end, that was by Langley, that basket. Nice kiss off the glass for Cam Langley. Stop and jump, and here's Fisher again. Wilson Fisher, back-to-back -back jams. He's getting some nice assists from Fisher, and that last one was, was from Marrow. Need some bread with that jam, though, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and Keys gets fouled on the three-pointer. That doesn't please Coach Joyner. We have to say Buck Joyner because we got two Joyners coaching yeah. in this contest. That's true, and they're not related. And they're not related. Although we know Joyner name is synonymous with basketball, basketball. and coaching. Right. <laughs> of course, uh, Buck lost his dad during the regular season. Yes. Our condolences to... Him and the Joyner family, and there's Wilson Fisher. His dad was a good friend. We grew up playing high school basketball together. Ed Buck Joyner Sr. So Denzel Keys at the free throw line. He has eight points in the game so far. He's really been explosive for the Aggies in this first half. Second one doesn't fall. Who's fouled on a three point attempt? From the line this year, Keys is shooting right at uh, 61%. That one rims out. So he only made one of three. Right. But he hit a couple threes from outside. Mitchell. Now, Kalen Fisher will set it all up again. Trying to get the screen, and there he goes. Pulls up for the jumper, Fisher no good. Big rebound by Denzel Keys. On the defensive board, Keys pulls up, dumps it inside. A loser B, working hard, nothing. And now the Pirates come out with it. Foul, blocking foul, and that's on Langley. Lardy, rather. Make that on Lardy. And they're letting them play. This game is getting very, very physical. The referees are allowing them to play. There's a lot of contact. That's what championship basketball is all about. Tournament play. Getting ready for the NCAA tournament next week. And that was a good call. One team, one shot, one dance. The 2018 MEAC Basketball Tournament is back at Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. It's six days of nonstop action as your favorite MEAC men's and women's basketball teams battle it out on the court for the right to play in the big dance. Get your tickets today at MEACHoops.com. Member institutions and Ticketmaster. March 5th through 10th at Scope Arena as the road to the big dance goes through Norfolk. I am a student athlete. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. A sister. A brother. A boyfriend. A girlfriend. Black. White. Hispanic. Asian. Bahamian. Belarus. A global citizen. All of these things that I am can lead to misconceived preconceptions. Also known as stereotypes. Estereotipos. And in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, we don't accept stereotypes. You see, there's no room for injustice and intolerance in sports. Sports do not judge. 
When I'm on that track. When I'm on that field. When I'm on that court. I'm not listening to the naysayers. I'm focused on the voice inside. That's giving me the confidence to lead my team. And outperform our opponents. Because in my conference, our diversity brings us together. And our adversity gives us strength. The strength to be a champion. And the confidence to be my authentic self. We are Mia.